<laughs> so, <laughs> so transmission, though, where did the idea or concept come from? Um, the, the, well, the original idea actually came in as an extension from a show, earlier show down at Pataka, Whakapi. Um, and uh, really it's just about, you know, it's extending on the ideas that I had from there. And in terms of transmission, what I was sort of really focusing or, or thinking about is, is um, I'm just amazed that over hundreds of years, thousands of years, generation after generation, that Māori, is, is, as well as indigenous cultures, um, are able to communicate their beliefs and, and through the generations, it's still there. And what, what really amazes me, though, is that it's all done with sound. Um, we, we do have a visual language, obviously, with our whakairo, our rāranga, um, our moko, uh, you know, it's it's all full of, of our artwork, our motif, um, our designs, but it's it's only a, a starting point, and then it's the starting point for all of the corridor that comes out, um, and and the continuance of that. So I'm, yeah, I was just sort of really amazed. I'm just amazed by that. You know, that that notion of sound has actually you know given life to so many cultures. Um, and it continues to do so, and it always will. Mm. Um, yeah. And then in an educational context, um, as a teacher for the last sort of, you know, 15 odd years, w with the students coming through that I have, um, and I see a lot of Māori and non-Māori actually struggle with writing. It's, it's like the hard, one of the hardest things for a student to overcome. Um, and so, you know, you've got this, these two things here where sound has enabled cultures to survive forever <laughs> and then a written language, which is somewhat quite foreign to Māori, um, that we're struggling with. Um, not, not, you know, just a, a generalised assumption from my learning, uh, from my teaching and, and, yeah, so it's just... I can sort of see that really the, the technologies available to us now, um, like VR, like AR, um, even our cell phones, it enables us to communicate through sound in a way that uh, you know, we, well, we can we can converse, mm -hmm. you know, we can converse, we can carry on those corridor. Yeah, it's so cool because at the moment, too, the world of sound with the Taonga Pūrō that I work with, um, I'm transitioning into exactly what you said. Because in the world of sound, we know over the last, how many, uh, in New Zealand anyway, it's only 150, 200 odd years, um, where the written form of music or sound has been written in a form known as a Western musical score, mm. whereas one of the uh, challenges I've been going through for a little wee while now um, is actually saying, well, the world of sound has been around forever, and the geographical score that we have that is around us is exactly what I play when I play with the instruments. Mm. And so when you look at our creative arts, our language, um, that was our written language. Mm. When you looked at weaving, you know, when you did a takirua design on a kite, everybody knows in the world of the whare or the weaving world, what a takirua plait is. Mm. Everybody knows uh, what a fiddy is. Yeah. Uh, and each of those names or processes in that particular art field has a story mm -hmm. and has a meaning and has a connection to genealogy, to the whakapapa, and a connection back to all the atua where all of us sort of like go mm -hmm. back to those deities of both femininity and masculinity. And then when we look at our designs, uh, a mangupare design, whether it is on a raranga, 
whether it is etched into the skin on moko, whether it is etched into wood, stone or bone, um, on a whakairo, on a carving, whether it is uh, incantated in a chant through karakia, through motete or pātere, it is, means exactly the same thing. Mm. So I use that as my uh, audible score. Yeah. So when I walk into a tupuna whare or a marae, every marae has a different score because every marae's layout is different. And the opening page of the score usually has the title, the composer's name, and particular notes. It's in D or it's in A minor or something or other, like Beethoven's fifth, you know, and then underneath it will have... Um, originally scored by the particular orchestra that it was played in for the first time. Yeah. And uh, whereas for me, whenever I walk into a whareni or walk to the marae, the first place you come across is the cover page, but at a marae it's the waharoa. Yeah. It's the gateway and it has, usually the gateways talk about what hapu resides there yeah. uh, and it shows it in the many motifs of our ancestral history. And so I, there are certain, like when it's carving, there are certain ways I play the kōwōwō to read the patterns yeah. on the on the puhoro design, on the carving, on the spiralled forms representing the shoulders, the three-fingered uh, hands that represent most carvings are, are represented by the front, uh, front, front three uh, matimatu, uh, right through to those are the patterns that I use as my score. Then when you go to the tukutuku panels, those are my percussive scores. And so I pick up my tumutumu, and then when I see the urufetu, I'll play it in a particular pattern, representing the urufetu. Mm, when it's right. pātiki, you know pātiki is our fish, yeah. and so pātiki, when you go and stand in the water, you see them go fluttering away, and so I'll pick up an instrument, and when it's the pātiki design, there's a like there's a there's an actual papaki or a rhythmic pattern that you follow, yeah. arapotama all the way through to paimon, yeah. and so then you come across the rafters, the ko fai fai patterns, the koiri, the koru, mm. the mangopare, the uno nahi, all of those motifs for me are like a Western composer looking at a semi cradle, a crotchet a crescendo, all of those particular things, but at the moment, um, yeah, there's nothing out there that portrays it. Mm. And yet, when I tell people, at the moment, everything when you look around in a tupuna whare is to say, yeah. we're here, yeah. you ain't just, you are just not looking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like the, um, like transmission, That that's, that's the stage I'm in. In asking the same question you are asking uh, in, in, in this exhibition and through this new technology that we have in terms of uh, the creation of those designs on a computer and then transmitting those designs from that digital interface into a construction made out of, is it resin? Uh, plastic, plastic. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a type of plastic. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and so it's that whole transitioning, mm. and in the performance space, and the performance that that I did, um, I questioned. I started off talking about where the instruments came from, and the uh, genealogy and foundations of it, and when I came over into the space where the instruments are from. You would have heard me doing a lullaby, and it's sort of like in the lullaby I asked the question: um, I was holding both instruments and saying, "You are my mukupuna. What is the question at this time? You are both the healing. Mm. You are made from wood, and the genealogy that comes from the wood, and the carving that is." created with, within you, you are still my mukupuna because you are created by the water and the sand 
and all those elements that we don't really talk about, mm. but you are still part of the whenua. Yeah. You are still manukutena. You look different. You look different, but we are still one family. Yeah, awesome. You know, and so that's what I was saying in that in that uri uri. And then when I went from here and moved around back into that space over there, I spoke about the putorino because you had one putorino that is carved in it the story of the cry of the female deity known as Hinere Kateri and her cry about her journey and her story. And when I looked at the, the plastic uh, putorino, I was saying, this is your history too. This is where you come from. Mm. Even though you may not feel like you're in the same family, you are shaped and you are created in this family. And mm. so, uh, and so, and then that's when I sort of like looked out into the universe and said, So the question is for all of us yeah. can you have one without the other? Mm. Can you have both of them together? It's up to you to decide. Yeah. yeah that is the question. Yeah. You know, and it's sort of like saying they are both from the same whakapapa. Yeah. It's whether you can see it or not. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's it, eh? Yeah, and that, and because that's it in a nutshell too. Um, that it, you know, extending on fuckapi um, is it's it is. Do you accept these ideas? Mm. And ultimately, that is what is. That's what I'm transmitting. Is the, just my view on on all sorts of different things that that are happening that have happened. Um, and then it's up to you, you know, whether you receive them and whether you want to transmit them further. Um, yeah, because I think, you know, when, when we are talking about sound and culture and the continuance of culture, um, that's what I'm amazed at, yeah. is, is that, is that it's, it continues. But it only ever happens in terms of that continuation is if ideas are transmitted and received and then transmitted again and received and, and on and on and on through the generations eh? mm, yeah mm, yeah so that's that's sort of what I'm really interested in and and and, and like you were talking before about that whakapapa I think that's super important um, because when we are talking about plastic if we look at how plastic is made and, and sort of where it comes from, um, there's actually a closer whakapapa than you think. Mm. You know, mm. like, it's whether you choose to see it or not, you know, like you said. So, you know, in terms of oil, so plastic is a byproduct of oil. Um, oil is, is uh, wood, um, so the trees and the forests, uh, as well as all of the fish and the crustaceans. So, and, and it's just been, you know, um, marinating away over eons. Yeah. Um, so when we take that out, um, essentially we're taking the really old tupuna of the forests. So we all know that we can sort of whakapapa back to Tane Mahuta or Tane Nui Arangi. We can also whakapapa back to Tangaro. You know, there are those atua that we can sort of refer to. So, you know... It, it, it's that's it is is do we accept that you know do we accept that yes it's plastic and yes it's a new ma new material but but really you know do we accept that actually we do have a whakapapa to this mm. and and yeah that's that's yeah that's sort of part of the whole plastic thing but um you know there are some different cordial around that too you know um, in this day and age about you know, plastics being bad for the environment, and and I mean, there's 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 good plastics and there's bad plastics, and then there's even better plastics. So, um, bioplastics are you know a, 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 an alternative, probably a better one to use because it can break back down into the environment better. Um, so that's sort of part of it too. You know, like if we're going to use plastics, which ones do we use? You know, maybe we leave our really old tupuna back in the earth and, and only use the new bioplastics that are out. Um, so all of the mahi here 
that, that I've been working in is, is made out of um, PLA, which is a special type of plastic. And it's actually made of from organic compounds like corn, cornstarch or potato starch or something mm. like that. Yes. And then when you think about that, in terms of corn, you know, then you've got another atua there that we can fuck a papa too as well. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so, you know, it's, but it's just, you know, whether we want to accept that or not. Again, yeah. this is just a transmission of ideas that yeah. I'm sort of laying down, but, you know, if it's there. That, that fucker papa is there. And the story, because when you look at it, your 3D printing is happening all around the world. And whether it's things as um, small as a screwdriver, mm. present all the way through to something as big as a as a house, as a building, yeah. Yeah. there's 3D printing in that. Mm. And when it comes to 3D printing our taonga, our cultural motifs, our cultural design, our cultural concepts, um, that'll be that that brings us into a new. Uh, gauge of conversation mm. uh, in terms of well um, if we are going to delve into this world of 3d printing the question is is well when we are 3d printing um, cultural and it's not just maori because it's happening all around the world yeah but when we are 3d printing uh, cultural artifacts or cultural remnants of something um, it's up to us to create or dialogue or find an engagement process of, mm. of discussion. Um, so when museums, because I know museums here in New Zealand have been doing it for a little bit now, uh, mm. when they use their 3D printers to, uh, when they have a, a tiko tiko or kururu in the collections and they're too scared to bring it out because of its sacredness, mm. what they do today is they take a, a scanned image and then they do a 3D printing using a wooden, wood-based um, plastic to make it look like a piece of wood mm. and 3D print that kururu and then put that on the display cabinet. And mm. the, the, the original one's still sitting back in the collections or... Um, or taken care of in its cabinet or, or whatever mm. and so you tend to ask the question or that's one of the questions floating out there in, in the public and saying well what cultural engagement um, is happening for them to do that have they asked the iwi that that kōruru or that tiko tiko has come from mm. uh, and is it a Māori led project or is it a uh, or are Māori consulted in that particular process if, they're, if the artists are non-Māori and if the artists are Māori, uh, what's their process of engagement? And mm. so the cool thing for me in terms of the whole transmission is that um, it lets us know that art is still alive and thriving because new art forms are created from traditional inspirations yeah, like what you've done, and what it does, it, it, it it's brought in old but new questions to the floor. Mm. So like, man, oh, what design is that? Is that where, where where is that design from? And then if you someone says, oh, that's a that's a Tiarawa design. Like, oh, so did you ask the local Tiarawa people for it? Do, do they know that you're using their motifs? Mm, uh, yeah. And um, and whether the, the artist is Māori or non-Māori, you know, it creates a beginning of a conversation. Mm. And that's, I think, is one of the most important things is that uh, the process of engagement because one thing I've heard in this world that we're living in today in terms of the 3D printing of our traditional instruments is that when there is a process of engagement or a conversation has been struck and has started, you know, the process and the flow of it ends up being really awesome. Mm. But when there isn't, that's when conflict can occur. Yeah. And so it's um, the great thing about where you're delving into in the world of 3D printing is, um, yeah, there's a lot of great opportunity to... Uh, 
ripple ripples uh, the the I wouldn't call it a full on debate, but the opportunity of uh, what ingenuity can come because hey, we all go back to Maori tiki tiki, mm. and he always did things outside the normalities of what the papakaina had. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> mm. really. Yeah, it's it is an interesting one that um, that discussion, that dialogue that happens or doesn't happen, mm. you know, just as importantly. Um, but I find that strange. I do find that strange is that you know they they scan and where is that process? Where is that dialogue? Where is that discussion that happens? And who is that happening with? Because I I can only seeing it being a benefit you know like if people are doing their PhDs um, or their museum studies and they're missing a whole part of the process then they're missing out on all of the knowledge mm. you know it's 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 a part of the uh, the wider western or academic process or the institute process um, but but that's that how can you disregard everything else the actual thing. <laughs> it's yeah. sort of like cutting it all off, eh? You know? Um, so, yeah, I, I do find that really interesting in, in that it's actually just strange. Um, you're trying to find things out, you're trying to learn about things, but yet you don't even discuss those with the people from where it's from. Yeah. It's, it's just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. But I... Um, you know, in terms of that, in terms of that, um, that hotutu, that, that innovation, that playing around, that experimentation, that's that's what I love. You know, it's it's man, where can where can I take something? You know, like when I first printed the kowowo, that was one of the first things I printed. It was just the man, can it play? And and will it play? Sure enough, it played. So then I keep going, printed a noodle, always wanted to make a tutorial and all, boom, so printed one of those two, you know, so, and it was just really cool, and, and take, I mean, I love technology, but um, you're also talking about, uh, you know, the designs from here and from there and from there, and it's sort of funny, eh, you know, like, we, we sort of, Sometimes we get locked in, like especially when we use that word tradition. So, uh, Professor Mason Jury he always talks about that. He spoke about, you know, that word tradition. When we hear that, we sort of think about the past, and there's an issue with that, you know, like cultures now, mm. cultures then, but it's also now, and it's gonna be in the future, and so. That, that has sort of shaped a lot of my my sort of you know um, uh, my framework in terms of the, the culture is always now we are the culture. Um, it's sort of like a chicken and egg scenario, eh? You know, like what comes first, the culture or the or the person or the people, um, but yet the people make the culture, you know, and it's always going to be evolving. And, and it's always going to be shifting with that environment. So to, to put a bit of context around that, like what I, what I was thinking of is when our tupu, tupuna came to Aotearoa, um, they came from a different environment. And so when they put their technologies over, they didn't actually fit with the environment here. Yeah. So they had to adapt and innovate those, those old technologies um, into new things. And that's, that's sort of what I'm really trying to sort of, you know, transmit as well is that, you know, we're, we're always sort of in that state of being like our tupuna who are always discovering um, and going out and trying to adapt to, to new environments. Um, because, you know, in the next sort of generation, two, three, four, five, like, where are they going to be? Um, there's some really big issues facing the globe, you know. So as Maori, you know, how do how do we how do we tackle that? Yeah. Um, you know, if we're no longer on this planet, for example, then what happens? You know, what, what do we do? 
you have to you have to sort of evolve and adapt to that. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I love how in that in that process, you know, the, the wonderful thing is, you know, being artists, having that uh, culturally inspired um, foundation, mm. uh, whatever cultures that are that that we come from because we don't just come from one mm. yeah and it's holding on and transmissioning that into the now to what we do and how we continue to authenticate our learnings our knowledge our whakapapa uh, and how we portray that and visualize that and sound that because all the sounds create, whether from a kōwawo that is carved out of kauri, out of maire, out of tōtara, or whether it is a, kauri, uh, a kōwawo that is carved out of, you know, uh, what was it, PD? P- PLA. PLA, yeah. PLA plastic, uh, which also goes back in whakapapa to awatua wahine, awatua tāne, just like the rako, just like the the, the kōiwi, just like um, the crustaceans and um, and the shells and, mm. uh, and and the different materials of Papatuanuku surface, whereas the plastics you're talking about actually come from within within yeah. Papatuanuku, yeah. and yeah. so there's a whole another quarter of mm. up there. But um, just in finishing, you know. Uh, once again, you know, it's just uh, a wonderful way to be able to uh, bring the two languages together once again, bro. Mm. To be able to portray through the world of audible sound, the ore ore, the ori ori, and let it play with the nuku nuku and the neke neke of something that is tangible that can, we can touch we can feel uh, we can hold uh, alongside something that we can hear we can use our emotions to and we can delve into uh, that spiritual aspect which is um, yeah, a wonderful way for that representation of the stories of our past mm. because one thing i do know is uh, is what you were saying before, we are the past in present form. And what we leave and the authenticity or authenticity that we leave for today will be the foundations of what we are in the future. Whether we are in a big global travesty and chaos, uh, it is through our cultural foundations and our creative ingenuity that our tūpuna laid in their times of travesty to get through mm. and so bro, it's been it's been a real honor a real pleasure to be able to do this mahi with you brother man um, and it's mine too bro one of your tūpuna one of your tūpuna ngātorodani he had a saying ka u ki matanuku ka u ki matarangi Ka'u ki te whenua, hei whenua. And uh, one of the uh, creative ways I like to translate that into is, you know, as we come into this new world and touch the new landscape that we are around, we, c- we become part of it. We are it. So where do we go from here? Mm. And so... Um, from Ngātoroirangi of yesterday to our Ngātoroirangi of today. Uh, uh, let's see where the next transmission takes place. Awesome. <laughs> Get it up.